In real life, when a customer, which is a business, let's say, needs a supplier, which is another business, and they want you, they, them to make something, they'll go through this RFP process, the request for proposals. Now, I'm going to give you a quick example of that, but before we get into it. Hey, this is Noni Singh, an engineer, a creator, a mother, and a lifelong learner. Many people know me as Miss Tem, the founder of the STEM for Kids movement. I created this channel to help you raise your children, your students for success in this ever transforming world laced with increasing digital influence. You watch these videos because you know that there's something more inside your kids. They got the Elon Musk type of talent hidden inside them. If you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button and I share regularly and as a subscriber, you have access to the practical tips, tools and resources to raise resilient creators. And we're talking about engineering and business. Um, it's very important to understand, you know, uh, who are who are engineers, who are business people and, you know, what do they really do, um, right? So let me explain that by taking an example, a little story, okay? So there's a man uh, flying, who's flying in a hot air balloon and realizes uh, that, oh, he's lost, right? So he's up in the hot air balloon, lost. Now, so he, he reduces his height and spots a woman down below. Uh, on the in the field and so he lowers the balloon a little bit more and he shouts now 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 he feels like the woman can hear him excuse me excuse me can you tell me where am i so the woman replies yes you are in a hot air balloon hovering 50 feet above this field says the woman so the 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 guy who's in the balloon he says hey you must be an engineer and the woman replies saying, yes, I am. How did you know? So the guy responds, well, everything you've told me is technically correct. It's technically correct, but it's of no use to anyone. What do I do with this information? I know I'm hovering you know, above this field. So the woman goes, uh, you must be in management in business. And the guy responds, yes, I am. But how did you know? Well, so this is the woman's response, the engineer's response, right? You don't know where you are or where you're going, but you expect me to be able to help you. You are in the same position you were before we met, but somehow now it's my fault. Well, uh, I hope you got the, the joke in there. Um, of course, that's the, you know, I have, I've been an engineer and after doing engineering, I got into management and this kind of a hustle between management and engineering, uh, it keeps going. Um, and it's interesting to sometimes um, look at it and have a little laugh about it. But I, I'm, I'm sure now that explains to you the difference between management and engineering, right? Well, let's go on and we'll talk about the engineering design process. Now, um, when I, um, so I told you I was an engineer um, and then I did my um, MBA and I got into management. One of the very first assignment, as soon as I came out of the business school, um, I was in the role of um, supplier management, uh, which means I was actually um, on the buying side, on the, uh, the customer. And, um, you know, we would set the requirements of what is it that we want to buy and have the, the set of questions, everything formulated, um, which will then be sent out to the possible um, suppliers out there um, and, and then basically manage that process with the suppliers, um, receive their responses and then actually go through the assessment and the awarding of the business. Now, one of the, um, to give you a real life example, um, this this very first project that I had was a situation where my um, my company that I was working for um, used to manufacture um, like big equipments uh, that are used in the telecommunications space. And um, there were a couple of parts, uh, you know, 
little piece parts that go inside these big equipment and these piece parts were very custom very custom built parts and they were being sole sourced meaning we only had one supplier and they are very custom part which means only this one supplier knows how to make this thing um, and to provide it to us so it's a very if you think from a um, uh, risk perspective it was a very high risk situation having a custom part that's sole sourced now this supplier had decided that it was not going to build this part for us anymore um, and uh, which means which meant for us that you know we needed to do something about this right because if we can't get this, this these piece parts then we can't ship our you know we can't make our big devices that we sell uh, out in the marketplace so uh, in my role as the supplier um, a manager i had to figure out a solution right how what do we do with this situation now there were two broad solutions in front of me at that point in time one was to go to the supplier who was making these parts for us and say okay um, I, I, we understand that you're going to discontinue not make these parts anymore for us so you know let's think about so we could go ahead and think about what is the um uh, possible um volume um if you think about this this device that we sell in the marketplace looking at how much life that device has how many more years we're going to sell that based on that how many uh, of these piece parts do we need and while we'll be selling this device over the years let's say five ten more years but let's figure out how many parts we need now and buy all those from the supplier right away stock them um, and so that even if the supplier goes away, we have enough stockpile of this piece part that we can keep making our device and selling it to the marketplace. So that was one solution. Now, the second solution was to actually um, uh, find another supplier who could take this custom part, transfer it to their facilities and make it make it at their facilities for us and become the new supplier of this custom part for us okay so that was a second uh, option um, we decided for for all different reasons right you look at many different um, criteria around any solution when you assess those solutions that um, you know buying a whole bunch of stockpile of parts um, there's a lot of financial risk to it right because you have to pay the money now and you don't even know what's going to happen in the marketplace sometimes you may think that you're going to sell um, let's say 1000 of these devices but because the market changed um, the whole dynamics have changed the customer preferences have changed you can only sell let's say 10 so now you are sitting on a stockpile of all this inventory that you really can't move. And that's a huge financial risk, right? You have lots of cash just trapped into this, this, this piece part. Um, and so, you know, is the company willing to take that much risk? So, of course, you go through a lot of this, these evaluations to figure out, you know, what is it that may be the right solution? In our case, we decided that the best solution, the best path forward for us was to find another vendor, another supplier who could make, who could build these parts for us. So that's when then we said, okay, let's let's build out an RFP, right? Art, clearly articulate what is what is the product that needs to be built, um, what are the specs of this product, what are our requirements around, you know, the the transfer of production from this vendor to the new vendor. How quickly can they make this transfer happen? How are they going to manage this transition? So all those requirements as you can think about we put that and it's a long list of questions right and those questions then go out that's the rfp that went out to a few suppliers that we had already based on um, our initial um, short listing of who who were possible viable vendors we'd send those out to them and then let them respond to that rfp so, so that's, I wanted to give you a feel for how that process works. And then of course, once they respond, once all the suppliers respond back, you'll review. So there's a very thorough, elaborate process of reviewing all the responses and then seeing, you know, where is the best fit um, to begin the due diligence process and so on and so forth. Now, here's an interesting element though in my, so this was my initial part of my business career, the very first part of my business career. During my business uh, span of my business career, I also found myself in the other side where 
um, I was the one actually involved with business development and we were selling, um, you know, we were reaching out to the to potential customers to sell the products that we had. And so in that process of um, uh, selling a product uh, to customers, we have to go through, we had to go through a ton of these kinds of RFPs because the customers are issuing, here are our requirements, and we as an organization would go in and respond to those RFPs to, to bid on those projects to be able to win um, get the award for that business uh, for our company. And so I've been on that side too, actually writing responses. And oh my goodness, I have to tell you this, it's a very intense process. I mean, these um, responses, we're talking about like literally stacks and stacks of documents. And back in those days, um, the requirement was not just, um, you had to submit it electronically, right? So you have, the, there's a deadline. And um, by that deadline, you must submit. And there was an electronic submission. But back in those days, they also needed you to print out everything and actually have the stacks uh, shipped out and uh, reach the destination, whatever the destination was, on time before the deadline. So all these stacks of papers also needed to be shipped out. So it was a pretty intense process, um, going to a rigorous review as you're responding to all these questions. You have a great, like a team collaboration that comes into play. Um, because many of these projects are very big in scale. They involve a lot of different elements, you know, if you're especially working with a big corporation, um, the many elements of um, uh, the different products that your company might be involved in, piecing it all together so you can have the, the, the exact solution to what the customer is looking for, and then responding to all those um, very intense process. But it's interesting. Um, but, you know, the, the big pieces, of that's how business happens. When you hear about, the bidding, uh, the bids process, uh, request for proposals. Sometimes you see other kinds of RF uh, request for um, uh, different kinds of other things that come into play as well. But the bottom line is that's that's how business typically flows. Even governments actually um, do these kinds of bids uh, and based on these bid responses and assessment of those bid responses, they award contracts to uh, to suppliers. So that's the uh, very typical way in which business gets done. So now let's talk about how do you bring it to a child's level? Like this process is pretty involved, but there are elements of this that you can actually bring it um, in a way that mimics the real world. And um, to, to bring that real life RFP process and engineering designing, um, and that way you make that real life connection, right? Because Every time, anything that you're doing, if you can make a real connection for kids, you're able to address the so what, it connects. It actually makes it much more tangible for the kids instead of just being something, you know, something fluff. And so it's, um, it, this is a great way to bring some reality into how you're working with children in encouraging them to become problem solvers and, you know, looking for solutions. And you, you tell them, you emphasize to the children that this is a real process used by engineers when they create uh, technologies, when, you're, when they're trying to solve uh, problems and provide solutions. Um, so we'll get uh, delve more into the steps of the engineering design process and how can you go about um, showing it uh, to the kids uh, using more examples as we go forward. So for right now, remember, uh, solving problems, when you're creating solutions, leverage the engineering design process. There's a great way. It's a stepped approach of thinking and going about solving problems. Hey, now that you have watched this or heard what I just shared, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And also, depending on which platform you're on, go ahead and give me a five-star rating or like and comment. Um, and also share this resource with your friends and relatives so that they can also get their hands on all this valuable information that I'm sharing. Now, one more thing, um, I am giving away my seven C's uh, blueprint for raising successful children. So if you have not
gotten a copy yet go ahead and do that right away you can go to www.raisingresilientcreators.com the link is down in the description so go ahead click on it and get that resource it's a very valuable resource that can help you with your priority of getting your children on the pathway towards success so with that again subscribe to the channel and go ahead and get that resource right away